Hello everybody, uh, this is the uh, second video in the introduction to calculus section of the calculus guide uh, video series. Uh, in this video uh, we're going to talk about uh, rates of change, we're going to review slope and average rate of change, and we're going to introduce instantaneous rate of change and talk a little bit more about limit as well. So to talk about the slope of a straight line, on an xy graph, uh, the slope of a straight line describes the change in the y parameter, uh, delta y, per the change in the x parameter, delta x. So our slope, uh, represented by a variable m, is equal to delta y divided by uh, delta x. If we've got two points with the first point x1, y1, and the second point x2, y2, then delta y divided by delta x is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, allowing us to calculate the slope of a straight line uh, from the values of two points uh, on that line. So the slope can also be described as the change in elevation per unit of run or the rise uh, over the run. So it's the change in the value of y per the change in the value of x. Uh, to give a graphical representation, uh, on the right hand side we've got a plot of a straight line and two points highlighted on that line. Uh, we can see that the first point x1, y1 has values of 2 and 2 and the second point x2, y2 has values of 4 and 4. If we wanted to calculate the slope of that straight line, uh, we take those x1, y1, x2, and y2 values, and we can substitute them into our equation for slope uh, on the left-hand side. So our slope m uh, is equal to delta y, the change in y, divided by delta x, the change in x, which is equal to uh, y2 minus y1 divided by uh, x2 minus x1. So substituting in the values, we get 4 minus 2 uh, divided by 4 minus 2, which is 2 divided by 2, uh, which is equal to 1. So our straight line on the right-hand side, uh, we calculated that it does have a slope of 1. So here in this example, uh, we've got a function being plotted and highlighted in blue. Uh, we've also got two points uh, on that function, uh, x1, y1, and a second point, x2, y2. Uh, we've drawn a straight line uh, between those two points uh, as well. So the average rate of change of the function highlighted in blue, uh, the average rate of change of that function between two points is the slope of the line between those two points. So as you can see from looking at the function highlighted in blue, its rate of change is different at different points. For values of x less than 2, uh, you can see that the value of the function decreases as x increases. But for values of x greater than 2, uh, the y values of that function highlighted in blue, they're increasing as x increases. So in order to describe the rate of change uh, of that function highlighted in blue, what we can do is we can put two points on the function and then uh, calculate the slope of the line between those two points. And that slope corresponds to the average rate of change of the function. So for a function y equals f of x, the average rate of change of y over an interval x1, x2 can also be written as the average rate of change is equal to f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1. So y is equal to f of x. So when we're saying 
f of x2 minus f of x1. We could equally write y2 minus uh, y1. It's just a, another way of uh, another way of writing it. Now, what we'd really like to be able to do is we'd like to express this equation uh, only using the x1, f of x1, and a new variable called h. What we'd really like to do is to express that x2 minus x1 interval uh, as a single variable, which we're going to call h. And then we'd like to remove our use of x2 by representing x2 as x1 plus h. So we're rewriting that term, that expression, as the average rate of change is equal to f of x1 plus h minus f of x1 divided by h. And we're going to see in a little bit why it's really, really useful to us to have that expression written particularly uh, in that way. So we're looking at average rates of change. Uh, here we've got our continuous function in blue and we've also got the equation for the average rate of change which we're now writing as f of x1 plus h minus f of x1 all divided by h. So what we're going to look at now is that average rate of change as we decrease h. As the interval h gets smaller and smaller, the average rate of change approaches the instantaneous rate of change of the function at the point x1, f of x1. So what we'd really like to be able to do is we'd like to be able to describe the rate of change of that function uh, which has been graphed in blue at a single specific point. And what we've seen is that we are able to describe the average rate of change of the function if we pick, say, two points that are on the function and then calculate the slope in a straight line uh, between those two points. But as you can see, in the chart on the left-hand side, the rate of change of the straight line between those two points is quite different to the instantaneous rate of change of the function at x1, y1. So for values of x less than 2, the uh, rate of change of the function highlighted in blue, it's de the value of y is decreasing as x is increasing. But you can see that for the straight line uh, between x1, y1 and x2, y2, uh, the rate of change of the straight line, it's increasing as x increases. So the instantaneous rate of change and the average rate of change, they're quite different there. But what you see is that as the interval h gets smaller and smaller and smaller, the instantaneous rate of change at a specific point, x1, y1, on our function in blue, that starts to get closer and closer to the uh, average rate of change which we calculate from the uh, two points which we've placed uh, on our function. And what we see is that as that interval h gets smaller and smaller and we reduce the distance between the points, well, the rate of change we calculate from the straight line between those two points gets closer and closer and closer to the instantaneous rate of change at that point, x1, y1. So here, we've reduced that interval even further, and now we can see that the rate of change of the function at x1, y1 is almost indistinguishable from the rate of change of the straight line from x1, y1 to x2, y2. So we're getting closer and closer to being able to describe the instantaneous rate of change of that function. So the instantaneous rate of change of the function at the point x1, f of x1, it's also known as the limit of the average rate of change at that point as the interval h approaches zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk uh, a lot more now about the limit when we talk about what 
a limit is and try and understand the theory of that uh, uh, a little bit more. So we've just introduced that new term, the limit, and we're next going to learn more about limits and uh, how to calculate them. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your time and uh, see you next video.